Hello, my name is Sarit Moser. This is a joint work with Shweta Agarwal and Shafi Goldwasser. I'm going to talk about deniable fully homomorphic encryption. Deniable FHG is the combination of deniable encryption and fully homomorphic encryption. Let's start with some motivation. Election. We have two candidates, a red and a blue. To vote for the red candidate, vote zero. For the blue, vote one. The parties generate a secret key and a public key using a key generating algorithm. They keep to themselves the secret key and they publish in the cloud the public key for everyone to encrypt their vote. Bob used this public key to encrypt his vote B0 using a fresh randomness R. And then he submitted he submit his vote CT0 to the cloud. Everyone are doing the same. Then after the voting phase is done, one can compute this CT0, which is the uh, homomorphically con uh, have the tally of the result. Then the parties can decrypt this CT0 and they will know what's the voting result, how many people vote for the blue candidate. Alice can come to Bob and ask, Bob, for whom did you vote for? Maybe she's willing to pay him. Maybe he's in love with her and he feels obligated to answer. Anyway, what Bob can do, he can give her his vote B0 and the randomness he uses R to convince her. Or alternatively, he can give her the flipped bit and a fake randomness that he, will, he can compute using a fake algorithm that gets the public key, the original message and randomness, B0 and R, and the flipped message, the fake message, B bar zero. Now, Alice, if she compute the, if she encrypt the original message, B0 and R, she will get the, mess, the ciphertext Bob submitted, CT0. But also, if she encrypt using the flipped message and the fake randomness, she will also get the exactly same ciphertext. Additionally, she will not be able to distinguish between the honesty distribution and the fake distribution, where the fake distribution is when the message and randomness she gets are not the one used inside uh, by Bob when he submitted his vote. Election requires both deniability and homomorphism. Deniability to guarantee honest participation and that nobody will be able to buy vote. And homomorphism, so we can compute the voting result homomorphically. And this is true in whenever we store encrypted data in the cloud, we usually want not just deniability, but also the ability to compute on, on it. And also this is true in any data-driven algorithm. Deniable encryption. It was introduced by Kanetti, Dwork, Naor, and Ostrovsky in 1997. They gave a construction from trapdoor permutation, where the size of the ciphertext is the inverse of the faking probability, which means that in order to get negligible faking probability, their ciphertext size need to be exponential. When we say faking probability is the probability Alice in the story before can distinguish between the fake and the honest distribution. They also introduced the notion of weak denial encryption. When Bob in the story before can also lie about the encryption algorithm he used. And they gave a construction that gets compact ciphertext and negligible deniability. Additionally, they show a lower bound, some trade-off between the efficiency and the deniability of scheme. And they said that it seems inherent that the length of the ciphertext will grow with the inverse of the faking probability 
inseparable construction, which is a term they defined in the paper. A significant step forward was in 2014 by Sahai and Waters, when they gave a construction for deniable encryption based on IO and one-way function. They achieved both compact ciphertext and negligible deniability. And it's very easy to modify their scheme to add homomorphism to it. But this is not a polynomial time assumption. Our result, we give the notion of deniable FHE and we give constructions based on LWE, which is a polynomial time assumption. We support large message space, all prior work encode large messages bit by bit. We get compact ciphertext. Our construction is separable. So what seems inherent in 1996 is not inherent. But our encryption time grows with the inverse of the faking probability. So not the ciphertext size, but the encryption time does. Also, our en encryption can be run in the offline online mode. We, when in the online time, it, it, the online time is independent of the faking probability, and the offline is independent of the message being encrypted. Additionally, we give the notion of the weak deniable FHE and we give a construction for it from LWE that also support a large message space. So what's new in the weak notion is that we add FHE property and we support large message space. Let's see the definition of a deniable FHE. So as I said, a deniable FHE is an FHE scheme and a deniable F encryption scheme. So if we can get the key gen, the encryption, evaluating, and decryption algorithm, this is an FHE scheme. And if we take the key gen, encryption, decryption, and faking uh, algorithm, this is a deniable encryption scheme. So this is the syntax. I think it's very standard. Maybe just uh, evaluating is new. So public key function F and a K ciphertext and output the ciphertext. And the faking get the public key message randomness and a faking message and output a faking randomness. We want four properties from the scheme correctness, CPI security, deniability, and compactness. Correctness is the regular correctness of a homomorphism of an FHE scheme. So if we decrypt a ciphertext CT star, we want to get the evaluated the function on the messages. And we cannot simultaneously satisfy perfect correctness and deniability. This is inherent that we ask for one minus negligible. We also want CPI security and uh, standards. Uh, we support also large message space. So we have a more involved definition uh, for there. Uh, deniability that for every bit B, it will be computationally indistinguishable whether you get a public key, an encryption of this bit B using the randomness R, and then B and R in the clear. This is an honest distribution. Or a fake distribution where we get this B and some fake in R, and the encryption is of the flipped bit. This is computationally indistinguishable. And we said it's delta deniable if for every ad, uh, polynomial time PPT adversary A, he cannot distinguish those two distribution with probability at most delta. 
And this delta is the faking probability that we want it to be small. Okay, uh, compactness, the last property. So we want the compactness of an homomorphic FHE scheme that the evaluated ciphertext are not growing. It's independent of the complexity of the function f or the number of ciphertexts involved in the computation. And also, we want the ciphertext to be independent of the faking probability, regardless of the encryption running time. Now let's see our construction. Our construction uses a special FHE scheme. We will denote this special FHE scheme with blue. So uh, every time it's blue, it's from the special FHE. And we use it for the binary message space. So all the homomorphic operations are mode two. The ciphertext space is denoted by this curly R. The bootstrapping procedure, B of X, is evaluating of the decryption algorithm on the input X, the input to the bootstrapping. And it gets the ciphertext of the secret key. So this will output a fresh ciphertext because it will output a value of this computation. And uh, of course, the ciphertext of the secret key is a vector of ciphertext because the, we are in the binary message space. Okay, and some notation, homomorphic addition mode two, we will denote by XOR. Okay, so let's see. The key generation, so the public key will be a public key of the special FHE and a ciphertext of the secret key. And the secret key would just be the secret key of the special FHE. So we will need something like circular security for this scheme to be secure from the special FHE. Okay. The encryption, to encrypt the bit B, what we will do, we will first center X1 to Xn uh, binary bits such that their parity is B. Then for every Xi that is zero, we will sample a random element from the ciphertext space. And for every element that is one, we will sample uh, a small Ri, what we call here, and we will set the capital Ri to be a valid encryption, fresh encryption of the bit one. Okay. Then we are going to compute the bootstrapping on all this capital Ri that we uh, sample and computed in step two and three. And then we will compute the, the parity of the bootstrapping value and this will be the, the ciphertext. And we will output this ciphertext. So for correctness to hold, what we will need is that the bootstrapping of a random element from the ciphertext uh, space to be a valid encryption of zero with high probability. Okay, and what is the randomness we choose uh, we select during the encryption is n bits, x1 to xn, and the capital Ri for every xi that is zero, and this is small Ri for every xi that is one. Now, the faking algorithm, it gets the public key, the original message, and the randomness. And the fake the fake message b prime. So if b prime is equal to b, we will just output run. Otherwise, we are going to sample an index k such that x k equal one. Okay, so we are going to sample some index from this x one to x n such that x k is one. We are going to flip it. We are going to set x prime k to be zero, and then we need to sample 
a large capital R prime K, and we are going to set it to be encryption of one using RK. So usually for uh, an X, an, an index X that is zero, we sample a random element in the ciphertext space, but now we are sampling and we are setting it to be a ciphertext, uh, a specific ciphertext. So we will need some pseudo random ciphertext property. For every I that is not K, we just set the capital RI to be the same and small RI to be the same as in the original randomness. Oh, sorry. And we output our prime, a random prime, which is the same as rand, just with the flipped bit uh, XK. And we put this uh, capital R prime K. Okay. Observe that the output of the encryption is just a ciphertext of the special FHE. So eval and decrypt is just uh, the same as in the special FHE. So what is this special FHE? What do we need from it? We said we need circular security, pseudo-random ciphertext, and this property that the bootstrapping of a, a random element from the ciphertext space is a valid encryption of zero with high probability. Okay, so circular security, let's start. So this is when we get the ciphertext of the secret key, we still have security, the CPA security. And actually in our scheme, this can be removed by using two pairs of keys. A, uh, the second property, pseudo-random ciphertext, that's mean that we, we will not be able to distinguish whether we see the public key and an encryption of an essay, like a valid encryption, or the public key and a random element from the ciphertext space. This should be computationally indistinguishable. This is almost always the case by the LW, in the LWE assumption. Okay. And for the property number three, what we need is the deterministic eval and decrypt algorithm and bias decryption on random input that the probability that we decrypt the random input, we will get zero. This probability, almost one, one minus negligible. So number three is almost always the case, but number four is not always, not always the case. Okay, so first let's see why these two things are exactly like the boots, like give us that the bootstrapping of a random element is a valid encryption of zero with high probability. Okay, so instead of the uh, writing, oh, sorry, instead of, instead of writing decryption of R is SK, I'm just right, changing the writer, the writer. And this is exactly like what we want, right? That the evaluating of the bootstrapping of a random element will be zero with high probability. And since the evaluating and the decryption are deterministic, this will hold. Okay. We can even weaker the, the properties of this special FHE. We can ask that the decrypt, but then we need to change the uh, construction. Uh, we can ask that the decryption always output a valid message. This is almost always the case. And if not, we can replace the uh, not valid message with a zero. And uh, this, uh, for example, BGV14 satisfies all these three properties. Uh, we, we also show how we can modify the construction of BGV14 to get this bias decryption on random input, 
check the paper to see how. Okay, I also promised that we are in the online offline encryption. So if you remember, we select N bits and then according to this, we set this R, the capital RI. So what we can see is that we can just in the pre-processing select the N minus one bits. And then when we get the message B, we just set the last bit to be according to the message that we are encrypting and do all the rest that we need. Okay, summary, we saw the notion of the Nibel FHE and we gave a construction based on LWE. Thank you very much. And uh, you can check the paper, it's online. Bye.